Hello again. Here we are with Roald Dahl's George's Marvellous Medicine. And if you remember, George's dad has also got involved in making the medicine now. And uh, they're trying to make a new one. So this one, this, this chapter is called Marvellous Medicine Number 2. They were in the kitchen now and the big saucepan was on the stove. All the things Mr. Cranky had bought were lined up near the sink. Come along, my boy, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Which one did you put in first? This one, said George. Golden gloss hair shampoo. He emptied the bottle into the pan. Now the toothpaste, George went on, and the shaving soap, and the fresh cream, and the nail varnish. Keep at it, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky. Dancing around the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch you work. One by one, George poured and squeezed the things into the saucepan. With everything so close at hand, the whole job didn't take it more than ten minutes. But when it was all done, the saucepan didn't somehow seem to be quite the same as it was before. Now what did you do? cried Mr Cranky. Did you stir it? I boiled it, said George, but not for long, and I stirred it as well. So Mr Cranky lit the gas under the saucepan, and George stirred the mixture with the same long wooden spoon he had used before. It's not brown enough, George said. Wait a minute. I know what I've forgotten. What? Tell me quick. Because if we've forgotten even one tiny thing, then it won't work, at least not in the same way. A quart of brown gloss paint, George said. That's what I've forgotten. Mr. Killy Cranky shot out of the house and into his car like a rocket. He sped down to the village and bought up the paint and rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and handed it to George and poured the paint into the saucepan. Ah, that's better, George said. That's more like the right colour. It's boiling, cried Mr. Cranky. It's boiling and bubbling, George. Is it ready yet? It's ready. Uh, at least I hope it is. Right, shouted Mr. Cranky, hopping about. Let's test it. Let's give it some to a chicken. My heavens alive. Why don't you calm down a bit? Mrs. Cranky said, coming into the kitchen. Calm down? You expect me to calm down and here we are mixing up the greatest medicine ever discovered in the whole history of the world? <laughs> Come on, George. Dip a cupful out of the saucepan and get a spoon and we'll give it to a chicken. Just to make absolutely certain we've got the correct mixture. Outside in the yard, there were several chickens that hadn't had any of George's marvellous medicine number one. They were pecking about in the dirt in that silly way the chickens do. George crouched down, holding out a spoonful of marvellous medicine number two. Come on, chicken, he said. Good chicken. Chick, chick, chick. A white chicken with black specks on its feathers looked up at George. It walked over to the spoon and went peck. The effect that medicine number two had on this chicken was not quite the same as the effect produced by medicine number one. But it was very interesting. Whoosh! streaked the chicken, and it shot six feet up into the air and came down again. Then sparks came flying out of its beak, bright yellow sparks of fire, as though someone was sharpening a knife on a grindstone inside its tummy. Then its legs began to grow longer. Its body stayed the same size, but the two thin yellow legs got longer and longer and longer, and longer still. What's happening to it? cried Mr. Kitty Cranky. Something's wrong. The legs went on growing. And the more they grew, the higher up into the air went the chicken's body. When the legs were about 15 feet long, they stopped growing. The chicken looked perfectly absurd with its long, long legs and its ordinary little body perched high on the top. It was like a chicken on stilts. 
Oh, my sainted ants, cried Mrs. Killycranky. We've got it wrong, said Mr. Killycranky. This chicken's no good to anybody, it's all legs. No one wants chicken's legs. I must have left something out, said George. And here's a picture of that chicken with its long legs. <laughs> oh no, you left something out, cried Mr. Killycranky. Think, boy, think. What was it you left out? I've got it, said George. What was it? Quick. Flea powder for dogs. You mean you put flea powder in the first one? Yes, Dad, I did. A whole carton of it. Then yeah, that's the answer. Wait a minute, said George. Uh, did we have some brown shoe polish on our list? We did not. I used that too. Well, no wonder it went wrong, said Mr. Cranky. He was already running to his car and soon he was heading down the village to buy more flea powder and more shoe polish. Medicine number three. Here it is, cried Mr. Killy Cranky, rushing into the kitchen. One carton of flea powder for dogs and one tin of brown shoe polish. George poured the flea powder into the giant saucepan. Then he scooped up the shoe polish out of its tin and added that as well. Stir it up, George, shouted Mr. Cranky. Give it another boil. We've got it this time. I bet you we've got it. After marvellous medicine number three had been boiled and stirred, George took a cupful of it out into the yard to try it on another chicken. Mr. Cranky ran after him, flapping his arms and hopping about with excitement. Come on and watch this one, he called out to Mrs. Cranky. Come and watch us turn an ordinary chicken into a lovely great big one that lays eggs as large as footballs. <laughs> I hope you do better than last time, said Mrs. Cranky, following them out. Come on, chicken, said George, holding out a spoonful of medicine number three. Good chicken. Chick, 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 chick. Have some of this lovely medicine. A magnificent black cockerel with a scarlet comb came stepping over. The cockerel looked at the spoon and went back. Cock the doo doo doo! Squawked the cockerel, shooting up into the air and coming down again. Watch him now, cried Mr. Cranky. Watch him grow. Any moment he's going to start getting bigger and bigger. Mr. Killy Cranky, Mrs. Cranky and little George stood in the yard staring at the black cockerel. The cockerel stood quite still and it looked as though it had a headache. What's happening to its neck? said Mrs. Cranky. It's getting longer, said George. I'll say it's getting longer, Mrs. Cranky said. Mr. Cranky, for once, said nothing. Last time it was the legs, Mrs. Cranky said. Now look at its neck. Who wants a chicken with a long neck? You can't eat a chicken's neck. It was an extraordinary sight. The cockerel's body hadn't grown at all, but the neck was now about six feet long. All right, George, Mr. Cranky said. What else have you forgotten? I don't know said George. Oh, yes you do. Come along, boy. Think. And there, just to show you, is the cockerel's long neck. And there's George. <laughs> There's probably just one vital thing missing and we've got to remember it. Ah, uh, I put in some engine oil from the garage. Did you have that on the list? Eureka! cried Mr. Cranky. That's the answer. How much did you put in? Uh, half a pint. Mr. Cranky ran into the garage and found another half pint of oil. And some antifreeze, George called after him. I, I sloshed in a bit of antifreeze. Marvellous medicine number four. Back in the kitchen once again, George, with Mr. Cranky, watching him anxiously, tipped half a pint of engine oil and some antifreeze into the giant saucepan. Boil it up again, said Mr. Cranky. Boil it and stir it. George boiled it and stirred it. You'll never get it right, said Mrs. Cranky. Don't forget, you don't just have to have the same things, but you've got to have exactly the same amount of those things. And how can you possibly do that? Ah, you keep out of this, cried Mr. Cranky. We're doing fine. We've got it this time. You see if we haven't. 
Now this was George's marvellous medicine number four. And when it had boiled for a couple of minutes, George once again carried a cup full of it out into the yard. Mr. Cranky ran after him. Mrs. Cranky followed him slowly. You're going to have some mighty queer chickens around here if you go on like this, she said. Dish it out, George, cried Mr. Cranky. Give a spoonful to that one over there. He pointed to a brown hen. And George knelt down and held out the spoon with a new medicine in it. Chick, chick, try some of this. The brown hen walked over, looked at the spoon. Then it went, peck. Ouch, it said. Then a funny whistling noise came out of its beak. Watch it growl, shouted Mr. Cranky. Don't be too sure, Mrs. Cranky said. Why is it whistling like that? I'll keep quiet, woman. Give it a chance. They stood, staring at the brown hen. It's getting smaller, George said. Look at it, Dad. It's shrinking. And indeed it was. In less than a minute, the hen had shrunk so much it was no bigger than a new hatched chick. It looked ridiculous. Well... That's it for today. Next time, we'll try and find out what happened to poor old grandma. You remember she had her head stuck out of the roof. Seem to have forgotten about her, but we'll find out soon enough. We've got one more little episode before we finish. So I hope you're looking forward to it. I do hope you're safe and well, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. <laughs>